Welcome back to Z-Speed and thanks for tuning back in. Today we're gonna to do a drain and fill on this six-speed automatic transmission in this 2015 Kia Soul. Now Kia decided not to put a dipstick in the transmission so we'd have to bring it in for service. But I'm gonna show you how to do it yourself and get the correct amount of transmission fluid back into your car. So if this is something you're interested in, stay tuned and we'll get right on it. Now this engine comes in a 1.6 or a 2 liter 4 cylinder engine and this applies to either sized engine. First thing I'm going to do is get my car up on ramps or you can use jack stands. We need to uh, access underneath the front of the vehicle so we can remove the dust shield and gain access to the drain plug. Now Kia did remove the dipstick but there is a little port on the side of the transmission and I'm going to show you a picture of that right now and this will allow us to check to see if it's too full or there's not enough fluid in it but honestly I think they put this in just to get us into the service center because this is a little more difficult than a typical dipstick and they want to charge you 280 bucks as a 2020. Now first thing you need to do is remove six 10 mil bolts from this dust shield and then there's four plastic push pins along the front edge of this thing and then we can just pull this little washer straight down and that detaches pretty easily. Now to get the 10 mil bolts off, obviously you'll need a 10 mil socket with an extension and we're gonna need a small flathead screwdriver here to remove the four push pins that go around along the front edge of this dust shield and boom, boom, what a bing, you're done. You can get that out of your way. And now I'm gonna show you around the underside of the vehicle real quick and we're gonna get oriented to where the drain plug is located. So first I'm gonna show you the transmission and it's underneath the driver's side right here. This is your transmission. Here is your oil pan for reference and your oil filter. And then right over here, at first I thought it might be this black bolt right here, but that is not it. It's that little small black bolt is not it. It's right behind here. And it's a 15 sixteenths or a 24 millimeter socket. Either one will remove this drain plug. Let me get a better view right here. And there's plenty of room down here to work around so we can get our drain pan underneath there. And this doesn't have a lot of torque to it, so it breaks free pretty easily. So we're gonna go ahead and get ready to open this up and get our drain pan, pan in position. Now we're ready to crack the bolt, but make sure that your drain pan is completely empty. That is the only way we're gonna be able to tell exactly how much transmission fluid to put back in once we're ready to refill. Now, this thing breaks loose pretty easily, so once you get it broken loose, just slide it off and it'll flow quite quickly. You can see the transmission fluid looks pretty decent. Kia recommends that you change this transmission fluid at 60,000 miles. If you want to be even more careful, you could probably change it at 50,000, but you can see the color here is still pretty good. So we're gonna let this all completely drain into the pan so we can uh, account for all the fluid that we're gonna to need to replace. Now, while we're waiting for our transmission fluid to completely drain out into the pan, we can head on up to the engine bay so we can begin accessing the fill plug. Now that we're up top, you can see I'm looking down at the air filter box and there's just two clips. Here's one on the left side and there's one on the opposite side right over here. Sorry, it's a little dark right there, but there it is. And all you have to do here is just push down on these two clips and that will release this side of the air box. So now I'm just going to push down the two clips and then once that releases the air box, we can lift it up. And once you get it lifted up, you can kind of prop it over here on the battery and that's what I'm gonna do here and just kind of wedge it up against there. And now we can go ahead and remove the air filter. I've got a can in and man, that is filthy. As you can see, that is one dirty filter. I should have probably cleaned this already, but uh, I'm definitely gonna clean it now that it's out. But now that we've got the air filter out, that'll give us access to a couple of the bolts that we have to remove to pull the rest of the air box out of the way. Now at this point, you're gonna need a couple of extensions or just one long one and a 10 mil socket to release this bolt right here. And you can see I'm breaking this loose right here. And then on the other side, 
we can, we're gonna have to kind of pry up on the top of the air box to get a little better access, or you could use a swivel here if you wanted to, but we just have to release that bolt as well, and the rest of the air box slides up and out of the engine bay. Now that we've got the air box removed, we have clear access to the fill bolt, and Kia kind of went a cheap route here. They went with a plastic hexagon shaped fill plug, as you can see right here. And basically you just take a 3 8 inch socket wrench and just pop it straight in there and you can break it loose. Obviously, since it's made of plastic, there's not a lot of force needed to break it loose. I found it was a lot easier to access this bolt by putting an extension on my ratchet and I made short work of this. And once you get this bolt out, just make sure that you inspect it for any cracks and there is a small little plastic O-ring at the base and just take a good look at that. I've only got 60,000 miles on it and this O-ring looks good, but if you see any cracks or if it's torn, you may need to replace it. Now, as far as automatic transmissions go, I always like to use the genuine transmission fluid when I'm servicing a vehicle because of compatibility issues. A lot of the aftermarket transmission fluids have different cleaners and agents that just don't mix well with the original fluid. You can see it's 143 bucks for a case at Kia, but I think it's well worth it and it should increase the longevity of your transmission if you only use the original transmission fluid. Now, before we refill the automatic transmission fluid, we're gonna have to take the drain plug and clean it up. Most all of your automatic transmission drain plugs have a magnet attached or embedded into the drain plug, and that's just designed to pull out any small metal particles that might be circulating through the transmission fluid. And we wanna pull that out of circulation, and attach it to the magnet, and keep those small metal particles from causing any more damage. And speaking of small metal particles causing damage, that's precisely why I don't like to do a flush on a transmission because recently I changed out an automatic transmission on a 350Z. I dropped the pan and I was cleaning it out once I got it all drained. At the very bottom, it looked like I was panning for silver. I found so many small metal particles at the bottom of this pan, I really couldn't believe it. And I can only imagine flushing uh, transmission fluid through a pan without having cleaned it first and picking up some of those small particles and then shooting them back through the transmission. Obviously, you're gonna cause some damage to your transmission. That's why I never like to flush a transmission and if I ever did, I would definitely drop the pan, clean the pan out completely before I did it. But I usually just drain and fill. So at this point, I want to be very precise on measuring how much transmission fluid that we got out of the car because this is a brand new vehicle that's never been serviced before. And if I put back exactly what I took out, then I really won't have to use that little window on the side of the transmission that little service port to tell if it's high or low. You can see I spilled a little bit of fluid right here and I'll have to account for that later. But basically what I wanna do now here is just pour every little bit of out into this gallon container and then we're gonna mark that later so we'll know exactly how much to put back in. And the theory is once I've, if I put exactly what I, I got out of the transmission, then I really won't have to worry about checking to see if it's high or low because we're replacing everything we got out. Now, if you buy a used uh, Kia Soul or you're not sure if it's been serviced before, then you're definitely gonna have to use that little port that I showed you at the very beginning of the video to see if there's any excess transmission fluid in there or not. And if there isn't enough, then you'll have to add more. And uh, we'll, go, we'll talk more about that at the end of the video. But basically, I'm not gonna have to use that um, for this fill because I know that this car's never been serviced before. And as long as I put back what I've got out, I should be okay. So before we make a mark on the Rubbermaid container, you wanna set this on level ground. You can see I've got it sitting up here on my driveway. And now that I've got it nice and level, I'm gonna draw a nice little line here with a marker so we'll know exactly where to refill this fluid to. Now, once you've got your old transmission fluid into a recycle container, we're ready to clean the 
Rubbermaid gallon container out with soap and water and then get it as dry as you possibly can. We do not want to have any water residue at all in here. And once you've got it all dried out, now we can go ahead and refill this with our brand new transmission fluid. You can clearly see the fill line that we're going to have to pour it up to and we just keep pouring in our new transmission fluid till we get it to the fill line and then we're ready to get our funnel out and refill the transmission. Now before we can refill our transmission fluid, you're going to need to get an extended funnel and place it into the fill port. And I thought I picked up a long enough funnel, but it wasn't quite long enough. So if you don't have one, make sure you grab one before you start this project. You can see I'm coming in here at a bit of a weird angle because the funnel is not quite long enough, but we'll make do here. And if you go really slow here, you should be okay. Now at this point I spilled just a little bit, but that's okay because I can make up for it at the end by adding just a little bit of extra. But if you take, take your time, you should be able to get all of your fluid in here without any problems. And the main reason I'm being so careful here is because this is the first time this transmission's been serviced. I know exactly what I took out, and now I know exactly how much I'm putting back in, and I really won't have to use that service port on the side of the transmission to check to see if it's too high or low, and that'll avoid a lot of mess at the end of the project. Now that I've got everything poured in, I'm gonna add just a little bit more to make up for that bit that I spilled earlier. And now once you've got that taken care of, now we can replace the fill plug. Now remember this fill plug was made of plastic, so it's not gonna require very much torque at all. What I'm gonna do now is hand thread this in just to make sure it doesn't cross thread. And once I get it hand tightened, you can take your ratchet and just give it a slight torque and you should be good to go. Now it's time to replace the air box and this square part right here goes towards the fender. So just take your time and it's gonna click right in to the uh, fender well in there. There's a little space for it that it slides into. And it's actually a little easier putting this back in than it was to actually get out. I didn't show that earlier, but you kinda, kinda have to wiggle it to get it unattached when you pull it out. But putting it back in was just a little bit easier. Now we're going to take our two 10 mil bolts and we're going to bolt in the lower part of the air box and it just takes an extension if you can remember that and once you get those bolted in you're ready for your air filter. I'm going to go ahead and replace mine with a brand new one while my K&N air filter dries out so I can re-oil it but yeah if you haven't replaced that in a while now's a great time to do it. Now let's talk about this service port on the side of your transmission. Basically it takes a 3 8 inch ratchet like the fill port above. You click it right into that little hole there and do a counterclockwise turn by maybe a quarter turn and that opens right up. Now to use this, you'll have to be on level ground. Your car will have to be running. You'll have to be at operating temperature, which means it'll have to be uh, running for about 15 minutes or so. And it'll have to be um, either on four jack stands or four ramps, wherever you have available to get underneath there to access that. Now what will happen is once you open that port, if it's too full, you'll get like a huge stream coming out of that port and into your drain pan and you just let it go until it gets down to a small trickle stream and then you know it's at the correct level. If you get nothing coming out of that port, then you'll know that it's too low. You'll have to add fluid from above until you get a small trickle stream coming out of that port and then you'll know it's at the correct level. Once you get that small trickle stream, you can go ahead and close that port back up and you know that you're at the correct level. So if you're not sure of the vehicle's transmission fluid change history, that's the way you'll check the transmission fluid when you're all done with the job to make sure it's at the correct level. Since this is the first time this car's ever been changed and I know what I took out and I know exactly what I put back in, I won't need to do it for this video. So give this video a like and please consider subscribing if this video helped you out. And if you have any questions, please leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Until next time, just keep on repairing.